Let's pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We have two scriptures today where we are going to go through some image that presents in them regarding the good shepherd and the shepherd together. And then we will see if we can find new meanings in our context. The first scripture is from the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 23. It might be one of the most famous and well-memorized scripture in the Christian Bible. I first learned about Psalm 23 was in a small uh, Bible group in the church. At that time, I was young, want to know about Christianity. So I joined the Lutheran church. So we have Bible study. So right that day, when I walked through the, the church the whole way, I noticed the painting by the window, just like here. <laughs> oh, there, there's an image on the window. There's a man with a light skin tones, with a white hair, very long, the eye very big, looks masculine, and one hand has a tiny sheep, the sheep very small in white and sleeping. The other hand has a staff here in the other hand. It's image there. Looks so lovely, especially when the sun come out, the kind of, <laughs> the image just shining. And I also noticed uh, there's a girl behind the man, also a girl behind that tiny sheep. I was wondering, what does this mean? And my friend told me, oh, it's based on Psalm 23, which just, we just read today. It's the first image I know about the shepherd. I find it fascinating. People can transform the Bible, biblical scripture, into a painting in our daily life. But I, do, I did have some question at that time about how the shepherd be present in the church. But I have not figured out at that time what, what should I ask, what kind of question I can ask. But I really learned about the Psalm 23. It was when I'm already older, but it's still in my late 20s. It was in a camp. My friend invited me to a camp to become one of the camp uh, instructors to design the event, and for the younger adults. And they did prepare lots of different kind of events. Maybe I'm too old <laughs> for, to prepare those things, but I was invited. So they prepare a concert in one night. They have a group of uh, Christian musicians together. They play rock music. Rock music and the Christian music. Uh, I don't think they can be together at that time, but <laughs> they did that at that time. They draw lots of young adults to the concert. I was hesitant to attend that night, but my friend encouraged me, give it a try, come with me. So it was in the concert hall, in the camp, but crowded people so we cannot get in. So both of us just standing by the entrance. We can hear because it's rock music, right? <laughs> so we can hear it. So they are singing lots of songs. One of the songs, the title, the Lord is my shepherd. So the lyric, literally from Psalm 23, and I noticed my friend, he stand there and he sing with the, the band, and his hand just wave at the same time. That, that drew my attention, so I listened carefully about the melody in the Psalm 23. And that night, I learned how to remember Psalm 23 and become my daily prayer for a long time. I do not read Psalm 23. I sing that rock music song as my daily prayer. But fascinating, isn't it? And I can fall asleep after rock music. This is my first time I learned about Psalm 23 and the figure and how can I put myself in Psalm 23. Or just like uh, the, the hymn we just sang today. I can feel deeply that I need thy tender care. In thy present precious uh, pasture feed me. For my use or the fault prepared. I feel I have the need from God. That 
by the green pasture and the still waters. But if we read carefully about the Psalm 23, we can notice there are two metaphors in this short period of the psalm. If you look at the second half of the Psalm 23, it's a banquet metaphor. It shows God's, uh, glorious, uh, the God's luxurious care for the psalmist, the author. The banquet is a table prepared in the wilderness, the present, in the presence of the enemies. We are also familiar, familiar with the function of oil. The oil can be used to wash out those dust, also to all anoint your guests on their head, to honor them. We also know from the Gospel of Matthew, one night Jesus encountered an unknown woman who used her hair with the oil to wipe out Jesus' feet. And Jesus said to the gospel, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. In some liturgies, oil also represents the symbol of anointing the king or the prophet. The metaphor indicates the context of this psalm is in the wild land or a place with danger or crisis. Just right at this very moment, the host the God prepare a feast, a grand banquet for everyone in that crisis. The author of the psalm continues to express his desire to stay in this wonderful place, the house of the Lord, which means the temple. In the Torah, the temple, the holy or the holiness place, is the sanctuary, just like here, where anyone can get protection from any harm. It, uh, it also expresses a desire to seek God's goodness and mercy instead of enemies or persecutors. And there's this interesting phrase, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. There might be two meanings of this. The whole life long might be the natural life. Living a long life is a, is a blessing from God, which means God always with you, so we have a long life. But it also might mean another thing, is afterlife. Especially for the Jewish tradition, this psalm always been cited at a funeral, or to comfort the people that have family uh, just passed away. Especially when we read from the verse 3, God, he restores my soul, indicate this psalm especially used for the funeral. But either a long life or the afterlife, the desire expresses a deep relationship with God, with mercy and the goodness. If you look at the first half of the Psalm 23, it's a metaphor of the Good Shepherd. Traditionally, we assume this is the Psalm of David. The metaphor can be read as a relationship between the King David and the Lord on a personal level. King David was seeking a place to rest because he was facing lots of challenge and conflict and lots of personal wrongdoing. We know that quite well from the Bible. But maybe the shepherd and the flock in this psalm also can be understood, understood as a God and Israel, especially when we read this psalm in their context. The Israelites were captured and could finally go back home the wilderness experience in the second half of Psalm 23 indicates this context. The relationship is a post-Islamic portrait, a new exodus for them in the 6th century BCE. From exile to return to the land of Israel is a communal level that a group of people reflect on their experience together. The darkness valley be captured, be displaced, be cut off from their roots. Those times of terrible distress and suffering and nearest of death have now passed. Rope and staff represent that God provides directions and the comfort that comes, comes from and the divine guidance has upon them. 
when they got lost in their wrongdoings. But what kind of image did those Israelites have in their mind in the 6th century BCE? The image of the shepherds in ancient Near Eastern world is a very strong metaphor, stand for the royalty. In this case, the shepherd and the good shepherd image refers to the Babylonian king Hammurabi. He was always called the King Hammurabi is a good shepherd of the whole world. When the, when the individual psalmist or the communion Israelites reflect on their experience, the image of shepherd could be complex. We were captured by the Babylonian Empire and the king. But right now we were released by the Persian king, Sirius the Great. So where is our God, our Lord? Where is our God too among all this chaos? The mixture of the political sovereignty and the religious power figures made the or made the 6th century Israelites have no idea who is this real shepherd in our image. It's a very good question to ask them, even till today. Tomorrow will be the eve of Passover. We know this story quite well from the book of Exodus. Because the people in Egypt, the Israelites, they cried out, they were oppressed, by the kingdom. They cried out to their God, and the God heard them. And Moses asked to let my people go. This is the day, the Passover, when God see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame. The Lord will pass over your home. The angel of death will not enter your house and will not strike you down. This is the meaning of the Passover, tomorrow's eve of the Passover. The image of God, this shepherd, might be extremely difficult for the Christians who live in Gaza today, or in Palestine, or in Israel today to comprehend. We should also ask Benjamin Netanyahu, who sees himself the protector of Israeli, the following questions. Do you bring people out of the death of a valley or not? Where are the green pastures and still waters? Does anyone feel the goodness and the mercy pursuing all the day of their life? Do we anoint your guests with oil? Do people would like to be dwell in the house of your God? What will the Passover look like this year for you and the people around you? The second scripture today is from the New Testament, the Gospel of John. We know in Jesus' time, they were only Hebrew Bible. So as a rabbi like Jesus, he's supposed to be quite familiar with Psalm 23 and the image of the shepherds across different times from different commentaries. In the very last composed Gospel, Gospel of John, the early Jesus follower knew too much about the conflict between different churches, the conflict be between the true teacher and the false teachers, the conflict between the teaching from the synagogue and the teaching from the Jesus followers, a whole kind of message there, and also oppression from the Roman Empire, and lots of people lost their life because they want to follow Jesus' teaching. They know that quite well. So when we celebrate Easter several weeks ago, that the day Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, who was resurrected from the death, we know Jesus is our shepherd. According, when we read in the Gospel of John during the Easter season, that reminds us Jesus knows the, sh the sheep and is willing to lay down his life for them. And he did. We also know that Jesus is the Son of God and he acts on behalf of the mercy God, merciful God, 
preparing himself as a banquet of a foretaste of life in heaven for you and me. The Good Shepherd image here represents knowing and being known, a behavior of love on a personal and intimate level, also for a communion level. The sheep are no longer in the circumstance of loneliness or isolation. In the meantime, the Good Shepherd image also expresses a behavior of involving mutuality and accountability toward the sheep, the essential object in this metaphor. The shepherd and the sheep know each other, and the shepherd is willing to sacrifice their life for the sheep. The Gospel of John reframe the image of the shepherd and give us a new understanding of the characteristics of being a good shepherd. Adam and I love an interesting TV series on PBS. It is called All Creature Great and Small. It's done from 2020. It's a British production. The original novel was published in 1975 by James Harriet. He's a vet surgeon, an uh, animal doctor. The story was in Yorkshire, England. The context of stories is around World War II, when most of the boys and younger men they were sent to the battle. And what else left in this tiny village? Most of maybe women, older men, and girls, or people who cannot pick up their weapons to the battles. So they remain there for the farmer and the shepherds. So this story around those people. And I realized, wow, look at those female farmer and the shepherd, shepherdness. They do a great job, isn't it? Not only them, look at those kids, quote unquote kids, they can take good care of big flock of the sheep from this mountain to that mountain. And not only the light-skinned people there, people from different race, ethnicity, different able people, they take good care of themselves and the animals and people around them. It reminds me of the new image of the shepherd at that time, at World War II, at a difficult time. So the image not only one light-skinned male, long hair, masculine image in my mind anymore, from this interesting show we watch. We have watched that three times already, but everyone can continue to watch that, waiting for the next season. It's the good shepherd. What the good shepherd means in this show? Or how can we learn from this show to understanding of the scripture today about the good shepherd? So here's the problem of reading the scripture today. There's only male image of the shepherd in the text today, in the Hebrew Bible and then in New Testament. It might be constrained by the ancient, ancient text or the dominant male power king or author or the group of people who have a position to speak at that time. It is circumstance limit our understanding of the good shepherd, also our decoration in the church. The church I mentioned when I was young was in Taiwan. That shepherd did not look like me at all. That shepherd did not look like Adam, other Jewish American, does not look like Adam at all. So who is that shepherd? I do not know. The queer Bible commentary mentioned that in this kind of context, male and male intimacy context could be the lens. If you can have that understanding, it's a male-male intimacy world. We use this land to read the scripture today. Male, male intimacy represents in both Psalm 23 and Gospel of John that, quote, these emotions are set within a male world in which a male pat, uh, petitioner covers with his male God. It might not be a sexual intimacy but a desire, a psychoanalytic use of a libido, not for a particular affection, state, or emotion, 
but for the affection, affective or social use or for social force, the good, even when its manifestations is hostility or hatred or something less emotion, emotive charged, the shapes that shapes an important relationship between male and male. They bound together because of the force, the power they want to seize. In this homosocial or the same sex bonding, male to male bonding in this scripture, male may not be as smooth continually as homosexuality. In modern society, the male male bonding in our world, especially in the Christian um, communities, men often bond through the sheer homophobia against homosexuality because that kind of homosexuality figure will damage their masculinity. So they turn into the coalition of homophobia. Of homophobia. They explained why most of male assumists have wives and family lives, but also keep an intimate relationship with their male god. This kind of male-male homosocial ref uh, homosexuality reflects and enhances the patriarchy and glorifies the, stereotyp uh, the, stereo the stereotypical masculinity. Some of us might know a famous Taiwanese director, An Li. He has several popular uh, and well-known movies to, to the United States audience, such as uh, sense, uh, sense and Sensibility, The Eyes Stormed, Couching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or The, the Honk, The Life of Pi. His 20, 2005 movie titled Brokeback Mountain is one of the famous ones among the Christian community, especially among the Mandarin-speaking congregations in the United States. That movie describes how two male shepherds, Jack and Annis, they feel attracted to each other and gradually develop their intimate relationship. The Christian community criticized these films as a homosexual propaganda, and they start to boycott this film from screening. Even when the director An Li received a death threat later, after he received the 78th Academy Award as a Best Director that year, he, re he responds to the press saying, everyone has a mountain of broke back. The question is how we face the reality inside us and around us. One of our denominations, the United Methodist Church, will host its general conference this week in North Carolina. The bishop and the president of the Council of Bishops, Thomas Bickerton, urge all the congregations to be prepared for the upcoming dramatic shift after the general conference. Because by January this year, 25% of the Middle East congregation had voted to leave our denomination over the debate of LGBTQ inclusivity. We stand for gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and queer people. That represent amount of seven, six hundred churches and six point five million members. They have vowed to leave our denomination. The remaining bishop urge us to pray for them, and also the upcoming general conference, and to prepare what's coming to us, because at the general conference. Our denomination is moving forward to embracing all God's children, no matter what their sexual orientation or gender identity are. And also, we want to ordain all good shepherds based on their good doings, who love their sheep, their flock, and would like to sacrifice their life and lay down their life for them. 
I believe the remaining bishops have embodied the image of the Good Shepherd, and we are invited to do our parts. Besides the LGBT ministries among us, what are the issues and circumstances that we, the Good Shepherd and the Good Shepherdess, to be need to know today? Where are the other sheep to us? Then who are they? What kind of image of the shepherd and the shepherdess that we would like to present individually and communally as a United Church of High Park? Tomorrow will be the World Earth Day. There are that event around us. And we are reminded again of the good steward of the land. Could we also imply a good shepherd's image to the environment we, we live in? If you think that, you may consider joining our spring long care day this Saturday morning to good shepherd to our land. Or oh, do you also notice there are people raising a banner asking for food and financial support on the street, especially around the grocery store. If you notice them, you may also consider joining and serve at our open breakfast also this Saturday morning, also every last Saturday of the month. Do you also notice there are people in need of healthy food, clear water, and decent job or rebuild their house across our states and nations. You may consider giving your donation to our special offering this month, the one great hour of sharing. We can help more people as a good shepherd. There are still many things that we can do together collectively as a good shepherd. After worship service today, you are welcome to join the coffee hour in the fellowship hall and we can continue to share the image of Good Shepherd and Shepherdness among us and how we can put those image into practice together. And don't forget, there's one important message from Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is like the east that a woman took and mixed with three majors of flour until all of it was liberated. The psalm today reminds us I walk through the darkness valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. It's what people will feel from a good shepherd and shepherdness. And we shall know the other sheep who will rejoin us, rejoin this fold soon. May our Lord help us. Amen. Let us pray. When time is tough and challenging, please guide us, Lord, knowing you are with us through the darkness valley. May your spirit come and comfort us when we feel discouraged and disappointed by the circumstances we are in. May your image of good shepherd and good shepherdess become various icons in our hearts and encourage us to live like you, our head shepherd, Jesus Christ. Let us know through you there will be green pastures, mercy, and a banquet of heaven ahead of us. Amen. <laughs>